Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Raghu Bhagarva about leading and measuring productivity in the new hybrid work environment. Raghu Bhagarva, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thanks, John. Yeah, it's great to have you. I'm super excited for this conversation. Uh, Today, we're going to be focusing on all things hybrid work related. Uh, So we'll talk about the shift towards a more hybrid model in the workplace uh, post-pandemic, but we'll also talk more specifically about leading and measuring productivity within this new hybrid work environment. Uh, As we get started, I wanted to share Raghu's bio with everybody. Raghu Bhargava is an experienced award-winning entrepreneur, financial executive, and leader. He helps clients successfully navigate some of the world's trickiest business environments. After immigrating to the U.S., Raghu co-founded his own company in 1999. Today, Global Upside Corporation and its four four brands operate in 150-plus countries, with professional experiences ranging from being a CPA to heading dozens of international M&As, Raghu has leveraged his vast business ex- expertise in scaling his companies to solve some of the most complex business challenges. Every day, Raghu wakes up at 4 a.m. armed with a smile and a sense of humor <laughs> to tackle every new challenge his clients face. He is available 24-7 to his team to advise, mentor, and support them. A great leader is one that helps groom the next generation, and Raghu does just that. You can- Raghu, it's a real pleasure having you on the podcast today. Before we launch into the conversation, Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context? Yeah, you know, just uh, one thing is that I I spent all my life in public company environments from being controllers, CFO and things like that, um, and, and done what controllers, CFOs of public companies do, you know, take them public, do acquisitions and stuff. So you, you covered all of that. And uh, yes, uh, we are very, very focused on success of our clients. And that's the, that's the one objective that we never waver from at Global Upside. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Well, I, I, as we launch into the conversation, I'm really interested in getting your take. You, you come to us from Silicon Valley, uh, a tremendous, uh, just very competitive, very energized corporate environment, uh, steeped in tech and all things uh, connected to what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and during this pandemic, over the last 15, 16, 17 months, you know, so many people have moved to a virtual environment, but as more people have been vaccinated, um, more organizations have started to shift to either coming back to face-to-face or mm-hmm. more of a hybrid work arrangement with its employees. Uh, let's start by talking about the hybrid work model, which has gained lots of attention. What's your take on hybrid work arrangements? And do you think companies are going to be able to utilize this successfully moving into the future? Yeah, so let's just, uh, you know, just to set the bar, uh, let's define what a hybrid model is, which is obviously some people are coming to work and some people are working from home. It can also be where those people that are working from home will show up to work X number of hours, X number of days, a week, a month. And some people that are regularly coming to work may from time to time work from home. So uh, there's all flavors of hybrid models. Obviously companies are struggling and being challenged by how do you deal with that? Because we all believe that being in the office is extremely important for building teams, the culture, all of that stuff and creativity and innovation. Um, You know, is that really important? I'm not sure anymore. The reason I'm not sure is because, look, for the past, I just use 18 months, we've been working from home. And I don't think the creativity in the Silicon Valley has stopped. 
I don't think that uh, uh, we have lost our culture. I think this uh, this is kind of the next evolution of our of our business cycles of our environment where now we're learning how to deal with those things on a remote basis. And so those people that are going to work from home for ever for an extended period of time for or coming to the work infrequently we need to learn to assimilate them better into the environment we need to learn to better connect with them use our tools more effectively so that these people don't feel like oh i'm this lone person in 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 idaho and nobody cares about me or i won't get an opportunity for a promotion because i really don't know anybody at corporate and things like that so we need to evolve and 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 uh, work with these challenges so that we get to an answer that actually still works for us. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think you've highlighted a really important point, and that is pre-pandemic, yeah, there were certainly many companies that utilized remote workers. Yeah. Um, there were hybrid work environments pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, there were fully 100% virtual teams that, that functioned perfectly well pre-pandemic. Yeah. Um, but there were lots of holdouts pre-pandemic. There were lots of leaders, lots of organizations that really thought that wasn't for them. They thought that that's, yeah. that's something that couldn't work well. And you know whether people liked it or not, they were kind of forced into it because of the pandemic. And so overnight, you flip the switch, now everyone's working in a virtual environment. And what I found is many of those who are really hesitant to adopt the technologies that would accommodate you know, and allow for uh, a dynamic virtual workforce and virtual team, uh, people forced into it quickly, many of them quickly found that, hey, this actually works really quite well. Yeah. And in some ways, there's a bunch of benefits that we didn't get um, when we were all coming together, you know, face to face all the time. And so I think there's a large number of people who have been converted, so to speak, to this, yeah. this, uh, the utilization of technology and tech transformation and virtual workers and virtual teams and distributed mm-hmm. workforce and all of that. But there's definitely still holdouts. Uh, and there's those that have kind of put up with the past 18 months of virtual work, they've hated it, and they just are dying to get back to the, the office. And they want to be with their teams, both leaders and workers, I, I there's definitely holdouts. And yeah. so I think that's where um, the, the hybrid environment really can be a nice accommodating model uh, where you can, you know, some people who are kind of old school in their approach, you know, they can come into the office and they can yeah. enjoy time and the camaraderie with their, with their peers and, and have that kind of physical um, interaction and, and with a little bit more flexibility so they can work from home from time to time. And, and then other people who have just really embraced the virtual world uh, can continue to, to leverage that. Um, you know, I, I am a professor. I teach at the local university. I've been probably 90% remote for the last close to year and a half. Um, and I like it just fine. Like I, I go into campus when I need to. Yeah. Um, but most of the meetings we have, either we've discovered we don't need to have them or we yeah. can do them just as effectively um, through Teams or Zoom. And, uh, you know, I, I do miss being in the classroom with students, but there are, you know, there's many things that we can do uh, to, to still have dynamic interactions with students in live synchronous virtual environments. And so I, I've loved it. And I, frankly, I would be happy, you know, working this way for the rest of my life, I think. Um, but I have many, many colleagues who don't really feel the same way. And they're really dying to get back into the classroom. They're dying to get back to their office on campus. And yeah. I'm pretty happy sitting, you know, in, in my little <laughs> workstation in the corner of my bedroom. So, you know, I, the, the hybrid environment, really, the, the aim, the goal is like, let's tap into the best of both worlds. Let's accommodate preferences of different individuals on our teams. Um, but then it gets back to what you were describing just a minute ago, and that is, okay, now that we have some people in person, some people remote, uh, how do we make sure everyone's fully integrated into the team? How do we make sure that our culture you know, is pervasive across the team, regardless of geographic location, yeah. and everyone feels a part of the team, and everyone has equal opportunity for um, projects and, and, uh, and stretch, uh, you know, stretch opportunities and promotions and those sorts of things. And that's where I'm not sure we've figured that out yet. Um, we already know that there's tons of, you know, roadblocks and biases that 
can hold back women in the workplace, for example, um, yeah. uh, people of color and minorities in the workplace that already existed pre pandemic. I, and I'm really concerned about what that's going to look like post pandemic, unless we're really mindful about that. So these are some of the things we definitely need to be wrestling with. And I think, uh, I think one of the biases we've always had is that if you didn't come before your boss and you didn't leave after your boss left, it meant you weren't putting in your time. This kind of like mentally, we always thought about it that way. Uh, and, and, you know, what we now need to think about uh, is, is not sort of the input factors that go into your job versus the output factors. So if you were required to complete a task and you had the end of day today and you got done at 10 a.m., more power to you and more power to you to be able to take from 10 to 5 off and do whatever you want to do, correct? Because your objectives in life at work were accomplished and you're just more efficient than say your neighbor who actually cannot finish it till maybe tomorrow morning and has to stay up late night. And, and so the, the measurement has to shift and as this measurement shifts, you actually see who are your more productive team members. You also learn to value them differently. Not necessarily to say that they are just valued more, maybe that is one outcome, but uh, the, the slower performer isn't necessarily a bad person, uh, but needs to maybe find a different position in the company because they are more productive somewhere else, things like that. So that, that's really a mind shift of how do you measure somebody's productivity? Yep, I, I think that's a really important mind uh, uh... A shift in the way we think about uh, yeah. outcomes in the workplace. You know, I, I've often been frustrated about that because this expectation for FaceTime in the office. And I mm -hmm. worked, um, so years ago, when I was early in my career, I worked uh, at LG Electronics in South Korea at the corporate headquarters. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, the culture there is very much get there before the boss, stay until after. It's early mornings, late nights, yeah. and then you go off to karaoke or whatever oh, after, yes. after work is over, right? And so really long days. And what I, what I found was most of the hours that most people spent in the office weren't very productive. Um, and, no, they are. <laughs> and, and and so, you know, it, that, that was in my early 20s. And I'm thinking at the time, I'm like, wow, you know, there, there must be a better way for this. And, yeah. you know, I love, I love Korea. I love the culture. Uh, I don't mean to um, dismiss the culture, but I'm just saying, generally speaking, the, in the office setting, we, we do need to challenge assumptions and we need to challenge tradition a little bit. And what's the value in, in FaceTime? What's the value in, um, in the amount of hours someone has a butt in the seat doing the work? Um, I, I, I am a fairly focused, productive person. And so if, if I can be really productive and still have, high, you know, get a lot done, but still have really high quality and do it yes. in five hours versus 10 hours, then what's the problem? Um, ultimately, the company yeah. still benefits, right? And I, I've, I've posed that question to other people at times. And, and sometimes people will say, but yeah, the, the you're the company's employee, they expect <laughs> you to be working. And so if you can get that much done in five hours, then you, you should get double that in 10 hours, and the company can get more out of you. And you know, I, I, I suppose there's some logic to that, but that's a recipe for burnout and just employee exploitation. So we, that's not a sustainable model. And, and I, one of the reasons I just love the remote environment is because, yeah, it's no longer, are we measuring success based on how long someone's sitting in their chair? We're, we're, yeah. we're, we've shifted the measurement. We're now looking at outcomes. We're looking at productivity metrics. Yes. We're looking at um, you know, things like sales and client retention and uh, those types of things that really actually matter yeah. and drive success for your firm. Um, and, you know, frankly, I don't care if someone sits in their, in their, at their desk for 10 hours a day, if they don't get anything done, you know, they, they might as well not be there. And so we, we need to definitely shift that, that conversation. And if people are working remotely, it's probably all the more important because, we're no longer able yeah. to see who's who's there and what they're working on. We just have to give them, you know, things, the assignments, and we have to trust that they're going to do it. And, and and so we need to measure outcomes. I'm excited to announce. 
publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Yeah, and, and you know, you're, you're, you're absolutely right about the Korean culture. I've spent six months working there myself, uh, what about 15 years ago, something like that. And yes, it's a very interesting environment, you're absolutely right the way you defined it. Um, and one of the things that happens when you go to work anywhere in the world is that you, you know, the water cooler, correct? You, you gather around it, you gather around the coffee machine, you take all these breaks all day long and your productivity might be lower compared to when you're working from home because who are you gonna have coffee with? There's no water cooler. And as an example, my coffee consumption has gone down because in the office, there's always a coffee made at home, I actually have to go make it, not complaining about that, but because it's not made, you don't want to make it every two hours or three hours or whatever it is. Uh, but there's a, there's a lot of change around this. And also, you know, it allows employees to have to control their schedule, okay? which means somebody like me who's much, much more productive in the morning. Um, I have done more by 10 o'clock than most people. I mean, many people don't even get to work at 10, which is fine. Not, not why are you coming late, but then they can stay up till eight o'clock and work that time, shift. Whereas at you know, four or five o'clock, I'm thinking like, hey, it's end of my day, allowing me that flexibility, which allows me to then have that better work-life balance. So the one challenge we all faced early in the pandemic was, work and home was the same place. So you were sitting in your bedroom in the corner and working and you just never knew when to turn it off. But then maybe some of us never knew when to turn it on because we were in our bedroom all day, correct? Uh, but that, that work from home and that culture that a company can push for to say, listen guys, you've got to focus on your personal life as much as your work life. And stop at some point. It could be 8 p.m. for the guy who starts at 8, 10, or it could be 4 p.m. for the guy who starts at 4, or whatever it is, correct? And, and, and what that allows you to do is have that, have that flexibility, have that work-life balance where you can just say, yes, my kids come home at 3, I stop work, and I have a very productive, very satisfying life at home from eight, uh, from three in the afternoon to whenever my kids go to bed. And, and that's because if you're more satisfied in your personal life, you are more productive in your work yeah. life. And, yeah. and then you're not bound by these, so to speak, shackles that say, hey, if I'm not at eight to five in the office, then some supervisor is looking at me and saying, this guy is not working. He's not putting this time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with everything you're saying. Um, there's no question that providing at least some level of flexibility around virtual work uh, is going to benefit most employees and most employers. Um, and, and so we definitely want to, uh, to, to look for ways to empower people, you know, to take ownership yeah. back of their lives and, and to have more of a balance and to, to, to develop their whole self and not just their careers. Because like you said, when people feel more well-rounded, when they have a, a strong, satisfying personal life, their work life is better, their productivity is yeah. better. 
um, and they're going to be more engaged, which of course is what we want in the workplace. With this move towards more of a hybrid environment, uh, mm-hmm. we're trying to be more accommodating. We're trying to help you know people yeah. who want to be in the physical office, uh, those who want to have more flexibility, be working remotely. Um, but the challenge is how do we integrate them together well? So what systems, what processes need to change in most organizations to be able to accommodate that? Yeah, I, I think there is there's a there's a play on both. Uh, technology, as well as non-technology solutions, correct? So uh, better usage of team or uh, Microsoft Teams or, or, or uh, Zoom or, you know, there's lots of options nowadays, correct? Uh, that, that's one way to think about how do you integrate people because you can have them on calls and a video call like you and me talking right now, right? Uh, even though who knows if you will ever meet in person, but I kind of feel a connection to you uh, and, and we can have this conversation. And especially if you're on opposite coast, I mean, imagine trying to do this live, correct, <laughs> in person. Uh, but then there is the non-technology part of, you know, like you cannot just say because we're having this Zoom call once a day or once a week, that's all you need. Uh, maybe once a month, once a quarter on a periodic basis. And you know, you want to have uh, everybody get together or get together in smaller teams um, to, to connect with people to, to say, oh yeah, now I actually know you because I've been talking to you for the last three, six, nine months, but now let, let me shake your hand and feel that bond strengthen. And, and these aren't just activities you want to do by just saying, hey, let's put everybody in a room and let it Uh, happen organically this is more about possibly doing a training program around you know things that are business related on things that are you know networking related right because how do you connect with somebody how do you feel comfortable that i can pick up the phone and do a video call with with john versus just doing a zoom meeting when it's scheduled by my map by our managers because that's how you build that relationship, right? That's how that cooler event happened, that the coffee pot event happened. You just walk there, somebody was there and you start talking to them. So why don't you pick up the phone and do a FaceTime call uh, or a video call with somebody? There's also, uh, you know, allowing teams to get together and do non-business events. So let's all possibly go out for uh, half a day of golfing or, or something like that. Uh, and and uh, golfing can still be construed as a non-team building type environment because you're just in a group of four. You can do other events where you have a broader participation um, and things like that. So, um, and then there are cer- certain other tools that you know many many companies are coming up with and utilizing uh, where you can have a much broader audience. Um, for example, you can then go from table to table, like in a networking type session, and, and talk to these two, three people here, and then you go over for another five minutes to another table and stuff. So those are those are tools that, you know, obviously the innovators are coming up with because they are seeing and understanding the need. And companies uh, are need to actually focus on those and say, listen, let's bring that into the workspace so we can, everybody can benefit from it from it then and people feel connected to each other. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So I'm also curious, I, I note our time is getting short, so we'll need to wrap this up uh, soon, but one final question and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap things up. Um, yeah. You're in Silicon Valley. Do you, are, are you aware of like any, uh, what, what's like the newest, uh, the best new kind of technological um, opportunity coming down the pipeline in terms of hybrid and work uh, remote work. You know, the, 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 there are these these uh, um, they're kind of a what I call a combination of Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams type combination things tools where they can allow a lot of people to gather and interact with each other. They can also be where, um, like for example, you know, companies used to have an all hands, and the CEO or the management would stand up and talk to people, and so you have 50 people, 100 people, 5,000 people in these meetings. And when the CEO wants to do a little presentation, you can actually mute everybody. At the same time, you can then open up. So I, we've used a tool that, um, that allowed you to 
move from group A to group B and you could see who was in the group and you can like uh, walk over uh, uh, virtually. And as you got closer, you could start hearing their conversations whereas your the group you were leaving, they would fade away. And so th those are tools that are like resemble real life. Because if you went from group A to group B, you would lose some hearing from one group and gain some hearing from the other one. And those tools are actually very, very efficient in terms of replicating that real environment. And it worked out very well. I unfortunately don't have any names because our marketing, marketing department creates all of these <laughs> events and we just yeah. go attend and stuff, but they're pretty pretty awesome tools. Yeah, well, that's, that's really great. Um, that as you know, as the I've been using Zoom, uh, I've been using yeah. Skype, you know, for years, yeah. for over a decade. Um, but what, one of the things that I've seen that's gotten better and better over the past year is just the ability to do breakout rooms and oh, yeah. and those sorts of things, which at the beginning of the pandemic still were pretty rudimentary. And so it sounds like those are getting better and better, which is yeah. probably the biggest limitation um, currently, you know, in a lot of systems to be able to have an engaging, you know, virtual kind of an environment yeah. when we're getting together with lots of people. So that's, that's wonderful to hear. Well, Raghu, it has been a pleasure talking with you. We could go on and on, but I do want to be mindful of your time before we close today. I did want to give you a chance to share with listeners, how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, your team, uh, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Yeah, so, you know, you can go to our website, look me up there. I am on LinkedIn, uh, Raghu Bhargava, easy to spell, easy to find. Uh, if you want to send me an email, uh, you can send it at Raghu, R-A-G-U, at globalupside.com. Um, and I will respond, uh, hopefully in a good time. Um, and just as a final word, we need to find the right mix of the, for the hybrid model. Uh, and keeping in mind the needs of the employer, the company, as well as the needs of the employees, because you cannot just have a very biased model favoring the employees only or favoring the company only. Neither one will work. And, and just like we've always found a solution that will work in person in the office, we will find a solution to make it work in a hybrid model. Perfect. Thank you so much, Raghu. It has been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out to get connected, find out more about Raghu and what Raghu and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.